Content warning, this video contains a short clip of police violence. This week on Deadful Sunday, we'll be taking a look at the anti-Netanyahu protests that have sparked up across Israel. The Times of Israel reported that tens of thousands of Israelis protested against Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the government he leads in communities throughout Israel on Saturday, after the passage of highly contentious legislation this week that banned mass demonstrations as part of coronavirus lockdown restrictions. It was also reported that in response to some scenes of protest later in the day, there were outbursts of police to protester violence, as we can see in this clip here. Considering the scenes in Israel this week, we will be asking, how far should the state go in exercising its power over individuals? And how far can the individual go in their actions against the state? The limitations of the actions of the state can necessarily be tied to the sovereignty of that state. Grimm points out that over time, sovereignty thus gained an internal and an external dimension, which met, however, in the right of self-determination. Self-determination regarding the internal affairs of the state could only exist if the state was free from heteronomy in its external affairs. End quote. The state, therefore, gained the ultimate right to govern within its own borders, free from the external interference of those equally self-determined other states. This we of course know is not true, when taking into account not only colonial history, but the more recent neo-colonial actions of many notably Western nations. For many, the limitation of state action depends largely on the structural form of that state, i.e. whether or not it's democratic, and the circumstances in question, e.g. a protest. However, I argue that this is not the case. As the entity which holds the monopoly on violence, the state, irrespective of its structural makeup, reserves the right to ensure the continuation of the state in any and all circumstances. The state, therefore, can do anything it wants. Now, this is not to say that within a democratic makeup, this all encompassing power is not curtailed or restricted somewhat, but the limit remains the same. In a democracy, violence might need a parliamentary vote, but the option to move to suppress and oppress by any means necessary is always an option for the state that seeks it. Why the state should need to do this is, again, case dependent. If we look to the protests in Israel, the Israeli police will move to suppress any violations of the law. The law violated is often irrelevant for the vast majority of police forces. States then need to exercise their power, which they do through repressive state apparatuses like the police, in order to remain in a position where that power could be exercised in the first place. Thus power and authority is exercised for the sake of power and authority themselves. Secondly, the state wants to exercise them because they ask, what is the alternative? Anarchy? Chaos? A world without governmental order? Many argue that if the Hobbesian conception of the state is right, and that we give consent to be governed, that the state reserves the right to preserve the ordered circumstances to which we consented in the first place. Hobbes noted, however, the right of the individual to resist. The argument has quickly become then that the state is here for us, to protect us, and to ensure that it lives up to its half of the social contract. But if it is so intent on ensuring order is maintained by any means necessary, when will it realise that it no longer has a mandate to do so? And at what point is that mandate, where consent has been given for the power over others, considered lost? Enter stage left, the power of protest. Arguably, governance is based on the rule of law, and protests often result in the violation of law itself. And not to be one to encourage the breaking of the law, some due consideration should be given to the actions of those who demonstrate that the state no longer has the mandate it so violently protects. To protest is to revoke, and not just the mandate of one party's governmental mandate, as is the case with voting in a democracy, but the mandate of governance itself. This revoking is found in the disobeying the order of things. Ultimately then, the power and authority of any state 
is used to ensure the continuation of the state itself. And in response, the governed reserve the illegal non-given right to disobey the law laid down by the authority that they consented to, simply by existing. This marks the end of the fourth episode of Deadful Sundays. We hope you enjoyed it, and that we'll see you next week.